the WASP multi-beam sonar allows multiple screens and functions. This screen shows a three-dimensional bottom profiler. While we've been looking at and demonstrating the sounder, the unit has been recording and saving data to its hard drive. And as you can see here as we're sailing, the unit keeps building real-time on the historical data. And again, we can control all aspects of the view with the trackball or with the controls up here. Zoom and rotate, etc. We can switch the swathe indicator on or off as we want. We can adjust our colours and the profile is stored. We can also set up our colours to reflect depth changes. By simply right-clicking, we expose our Dropbox and we can change the colours simply with the mouse or trackball again. Then close the box and continue. We can come back another day and the vessel's GPS will place us over the historical profile. That will give us an extremely accurate picture of what the bottom looks like and we can go directly to submerged features to place our pots. So while we're moving over an area we've already profiled on a nice calm day, we can actually stop recording simply by deselecting the record function here and then view the historical data. Over time, we build a very accurate picture of our fishing area. And if we have gaps that we want to fill, we simply select record the next time we sail over that point and it's a nice clear day. WMB160 has a built-in tide database. The unit will calculate the nearest tide station and adjust the depth seafloor profiles for tide correction due to lunar effects. Note the total tide height can be affected by a number of factors outside the lunar effect which cannot be automatically adjusted within the unit. This gives a smoother bottom profile and in basic terms will adjust for tight heights. The big point of difference between the WMB160 and other bottom profilers is that bottom profiling is only one of the features of WASP and yet where other profilers only record one point per ping unstabilized. WMB160 records 90 per ping and is roll stabilized. That makes for one of the most accurate profiling systems available. The others give say single 5 degrees while WASP records 90 degrees for 3D mode with multiple beams of 1.7 degrees. That means an incredible efficiency and definition. For instance with the WMB160 you can do one pass over a wreck to record it, where with another system, you'd need between 50 and 100 passes to do the same job. And even then, the lack of stabilization means a less accurate profile than the unit provides. We can set up the view for north up, course up, behind vessel or free rotate. And once again, we can zoom in and out as well as rotate around the image with the trackball. As we can see here, as we sail over the wreck of the Waikato, a former Navy frigate in 30 meters of water, the image only takes one pass and we can maneuver around the view and have a look at depths. The next view we're looking at is of the two-dimensional bottom contouring. This is a bird's eye view and this application delivers a number of exciting features that in their own right are mind-blowing. Once again, as we move across the Waikato, we can see the wreck revealed to us. The various depths are represented by the different colors. And once again, we have full control over which color represents which depth. The first feature we want to look at is bottom hardness or backscatter. Simply right click and using the cursor, we can move through the menus and select backscatter. This image reveals the difference in bottom density. White equals a strong return and black equals a weak return. If we use the image of the Waikato, we can see the differences between metal over here and the sand, rocks and mud. And then we can zoom in and out with the trackball. This is critical information, not just for commercial fishermen, but also for those involved in salvage, surveying or search and rescue. The second feature is that we can track our vessel's history. Right click to bring up the menu and select the track. We can then see exactly where we've been and we can use this for more efficient seafloor profiling. Another feature is what we've called event markers. We can mark where we've dropped off any pot or special points of interest. In the 